we go. We are live on EPTV. Thank you very much at home for joining us. We have an Event Rider Masters special for you this lunchtime. And I have two pretty impressive guests with me looking very cool. It looks pretty sunny uh, down with you, yeah, sure Gemma Tattersall. I know, Paul Tapner, just because you've eyesight but uh, Gemma <laughs> Tattersall welcome to EPTV 2017 series champion we're going to talk about ERM a little bit later uh, but how is life in sunny Sussex? Yeah it's lovely and sunny um, today so it's a beautiful day I'm very happy to be outside uh, right now we're doing painting of the barn so I am so happy I'm chatting to you Nicole. <laughs> you'll and be wanting outside. to chat for a good while <laughs> yeah, um, I have totally driving. escaped <laughs> absolutely now also joining us operations director for the event rider masters a former event rider in a previous life he's a badminton winner as well Paul Tapner you have got all of your sashes rosettes trophies on display not letting us forget uh, uh thank you Nicole um Are they all yeah <laughs> Yeah, I've got a confession to make. Most of those uh, sashes there are my daughters and my wife's. <laughs> that big trophy there is my daughter's. All those photos are of my wife and daughter, and and but there there is a there's there's a badminton one. If there, there's a badminton and one, there there's two badminton ones. There's lots of badminton and burly ones along the top there. So there's there's a few yeah. of mine. Yeah, I think they're <laughs> very, and they are very cool. <laughs> yeah, I think they absolutely count. Uh, guys, thank you both very, very much for joining us uh, because we should be all heading to Derbyshire to Chatsworth for leg two of the Event Rider Masters series this weekend. Unfortunately, not to be in the current situation, but we are still able to get involved in some form of eventing, even if it's in a slightly different form to what we used to, Paul, because simulated eventing and the eventing manager game bought by Echo Ratings is here for Chatsworth and it's leg two of the ERM sim season now. Indeed, you know, Event Rider Masters is all about innovation, We're all about technology and bringing that to our wonderful sport of eventing. And um, working with SAP and Equi Ratings over the winter, we had this fantastic idea of doing the Eventing Manager app. And, you know, we, we had the Stacks app before and we've, we've always had the Spectator Judging app. And, you know, the Equi Ratings and SAP guys, they came up with this idea and, and uh, created that over the winter. And it was obviously really disappointing when we then didn't have any eventing to 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 do anything with it. So we thought, well, you know what, we've, we've got lots of computers and we've got lots of uh, technology. Let's, let's figure out how we can uh, create a simulated uh, a series and simulated event. And uh, Equi Ratings guys have just gone above and beyond the whole team there because, you know, it's obviously every, everybody knows Derm and, uh, and Sam. Uh, and, and, of course, yourself, Nicole, you get in there a bit as well. Um, Wrote but, me in uh, occasionally. There's, there's <laughs> plenty, behind, plenty of staff behind the scenes that have been uh, making our, our sim season come to life. Um, and, yeah, we're about to do our second uh, broadcast from the, the simulated Chatsworth. We're supposed to be at Chatsworth this weekend, but no, we're, we, well, we are at Chatsworth, but from the comfort of our own living rooms, yes. gardens, wherever we might be in the world. You need you need a little bit of imagination. It is a lot of fun, I'm not going to lie, uh, because obviously we would all very, very, very much love to be at actual eventing at the moment. This is the next best thing. So basically how it works, there's lots of, of predictive data analytics that go into it. Um, the prediction center that Echo Ratings have used for the last couple of years runs the sort of simulation which takes into account all of the algorithms hundreds of thousands of times. And what happens for the simulated competition is you literally press the computer button once and then we see how the competition plays out but the exciting thing is that people can actually play along at home using eventing manager uh, Gemma you are in the field for this weekend how is your game plan going <laughs> preparation uh, have you picked your team yet that's what we want to know uh, I actually haven't. Um, Gary my boyfriend has he was doing it on the way to work this morning <laughs> did he pick um, you I believe he did, yes. Good, he good. better. <laughs> yeah, he told um, you he did, but really. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, so, no, I haven't picked yet. I was going to go on later um, and have a little look and pick my team um, later on tonight. So, yeah, it's very, it's, it's amazing to have these things going on and trying to keep us all busy and something to watch and uh, watch and do. So, yeah, it was quite fun last time. Um, although I did have a run out on Jala, uh, jalapeno. So oh, that wasn't so fun. You haven't, but you haven't been practicing enough, Gemma. Haven't been practicing enough. Yeah, Naughty. exactly. Yeah, Peter <laughs> is fairly heartless, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, it very has heartless. No feelings. <laughs> yeah, at all. Um, 
it can get unbelievably competitive in yeah. sort of trying to pick your team. There were a couple of thousand players that have played over the last couple of legs that we've done. And I'm not going to lie, my choices have let me down on occasion as well. I don't. Sorry yeah, about that, Lakers. Sorry, Gemma. I wasn't going to blame. <laughs> I wasn't going to blame you, but you know, now you mentioned it. If you wouldn't mind doing quite well this weekend, that All would right, be great. I'll try. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Paul, how can people play along and watch? Because it is going to be broadcast on Facebook as well, isn't it? Yeah, so it'll be broadcast on Facebook. Um, and as always with Event Rider Masters, it's simulcast on um, uh, the website as well. So you can go to eventridermasters.tv and watch on your smart TV via that or watch on your um, laptop or on Facebook. Two Facebook destinations this time because we're doing it um, with Echo Rating. So Echo Rating's Facebook page, the Event Rider Masters Facebook page, and of course the website. But playing along, you know, it's. We've just said, well, Gemma, what's your game plan? Well, actually, she's probably going to be sat in exactly the same place she is now, uh, out there patting a pony or, or watching somebody else work her ponies or something of the kind or avoiding painting, as she's already told us. Um, but so, you know, this is not about the competitors, this simulation. It, it's, it's, um, it's all about the fans. And get online, any device you've got, search in your app store for Eventing Manager, download the app, it's free to download. You pick your team. You are the manager of your own eventing team, your own fantasy eventing team. You know, we're pretty generous with Event Rider Masters as well. We've given every single fan $10 million to play with. <laughs> if only it so, were real. You know. If only it were real. I thought, I'd like to say as well that the app is extremely easy to use because some apps are not, um, but this one is. And I am absolutely useless at any sort of technology. I'm okay on a horse, pretty bad at painting, but I'm very bad at technology. <laughs> And I definitely can work this app. So it's very easy. Anyone can work it. If, so, if, yeah. yeah, if Gemma can work it, you guys are Anyone yeah, can. I, I, I'm telling you. Absolutely fine. I suspect that's probably got something to do with the fact that you get to spend money. You know, you get to spend $10 million. I wonder why all the females of the world are able to use this app. I, exactly. I'm sorry for being so gender stereotypical. I mean, I'd be very careful for that number. But it, it is a lot of fun. And actually, one of the things I have been loving is how much people have got into it. Paul, we had Alex Bragg on the, the Riders Connected special that we did. And Alex took it unbelievably seriously. The whole Bragg family were going wild after his simulated cross country. I, I did love the fact that he was uh, sat in his dining room, much the same as me, with his cross country gear on, watching oh his. Oh my God, he is what, so funny. What, what, watching I it mean, on his really? laptop. I mean, he was, and, and jumping up and down, you, yes, I've just had a good. He absolutely <laughs> loved it. So, you know, it's not just for the fans, obviously, as Gemma already said, it, you know, the, it's already been quite exciting and, and will continue to be quite exciting, even though, um, you know, physically nothing's actually happening. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> It's some great fun to watch, uh, great fun to get involved in. And of course, you know, like we've just said with that eventing manager app, you, you, there's this, this element of, of, you know, you're involved. You, you want your team to do well. Um, and, uh, you know, everybody's going to get competitive, but it, it is just for fun. And it is all about the Riders Connected campaign. So, um, you know, there's a website that's been set up by SAP and all of the partners uh, it, that is, is all about keeping the uh, equestrian community connected um, and it's you know we've called it riders connected but it's not just the riders it's the it's the owners it's the grooms it's the volunteers it's the event organizers it's the um all the different contractors that go into to making an, a, a, an event run um you know we're all missing each other we're not seeing each other like we normally would do um so it's it's all about bringing these people together you know all of the fans the spectators that come along and, and interact uh, at, at an event site as well so that's what it's all about is, is connecting everybody in a in a um, equestrian sense and uh very safe and uh, having a bit of fun yeah and it is a lot of fun so if you want to play along download eventing manager it will be broadcast at live tomorrow the dressage at 7 30 uk time and on sunday you learned evening, your test Gemma. it'll be the uh yep <laughs> I don't even know which one it is. <laughs> it's a simulated test. It doesn't it's matter. It's all up here. It's all yeah. up there. Exactly. Don't doubt her, Paul Tapner. Uh, go and put her in sorry, your team sorry, if you sorry, haven't sorry. already. Um, yeah, so 7.30, Saturday night, Sunday night will be the live broadcast, and we hope that you'll be able to join us. It'll be a lot of fun, and it will probably be a little bit wild as well. So come and get involved with the ERM Sim season 
on Facebook on over the next couple of days. Uh, let's talk ERM highlights because uh, Gemma, from your perspective, it's been a big part of your career over the last few years. You were the 2017 series champion. What is it, or what moment stands out for you as one of your favorite ERM memories? I think it's really hard to pick just one. Um, I think you can I've give had, us a couple. That's yeah, okay. I've had I've had three wins, and I think it's got a. I couldn't pick between them to be honest, because they were all very special. Um, <clears throat> my first win was Chatsworth, um, 2017, uh, with Quick Look Pebbles, um, little superstar, um, and it was kind of really special because the year before, um, it was the first year of the Event Rider Masters, and um, we had an all French podium, and I finished fourth, and it was like, oh, this is really boring. We just didn't manage to beat the French. So the next year, I was pretty determined, and. She just went absolutely perfectly in all three phases. And she actually really deserved to, to win that day. Um, you know, she really gave her all. So it was very special to go back and, and win. Um, and then my second one was at Gatcombe. Um, Paul's favourite moment of me having Can a little we... princess strap. And we'll talk uh... about this moment in a second. We'll <laughs> yeah. let you talk. Well, actually, let's talk about it now, Paul. So basically, yeah. you win. So it's okay. We'll come on to the win in a second. Yeah. Uh, Gatcom show jumping. Arctic Soul, who mm. would be made for Gatcom. Absolute yeah. cross-country machine. Fast as you like. Um, yeah. Two down in the show jumping, which yeah. was a tough show jumping track. And uh, yeah. Paul was rubbing his hands together in glee because Gemma came out of the show jumping, the whip went down and off she went, and that's it, got replayed. You're you're painting me out to be a bit of a a nasty person here. (laughs) Let's just explain to the viewers You have used excellent TV. You have used that that clip a number of times, Mr. Tapner. (laughs) You understand that. Let's just explain to the viewers why you're all suddenly ganging up on me here. Guys, settle down here. Okay, so yes, I am in in charge of um, choosing um, a- any clip that goes out. So any any photo or any video that is ever broadcast or published by Event Rider Masters, I personally approve or you know change. And um, there are certain clips which get used again and again and again. And, a lo- <laughs> and again. <laughs> maybe one of those clips that I continue to say, how about we use that one again, boys? Yeah. Uh, to my editors, happens to be um, Gemma's uh, little tantrum. She she was a little bit yeah. upset as she came out after, and rightly so. I've mm. been caught on international TV having a tantrum of my own, <laughs> yeah. um, which we we're not going to go there in this one. At the we'll moment. try and find um, the footage, Gem. <laughs> yeah. And, so um, so that day it was um, you know a Spike Arctic Soul. He'd done a very very good dressage test, and I was super proud of him. We were right up there. Um, okay, not right up there in the first few, but we were not far behind. You were behind close. The you were very close. Yeah. There was not much in it. And I know, I knew from past experience that Gatcom, um, you know, is very difficult to get the time. And also it was wet. So, you know, uh, soft ground. So we, I was, I knew that I could be competitive. Um, so the show jumping, um, you know, Spike has jumped very many clear rounds, but he has been known sometimes to have a few down. When I walked the course, I thought, my goodness, this is a tough call for him. Um, and he actually jumped the most incredible round all the way to the last combination, which was a, a, a treble off a turn. I remember it so clearly. And I came in and he just touched the first one and panicked because he knows he shouldn't touch it and had the next one down. And I was just so upset that he'd had two down because I felt that he didn't deserve that on his record. I get really upset about that sort of thing. And I think that if we didn't get upset about that sort of thing, then we wouldn't be competitors. And I certainly wasn't upset with the horse. I was more upset that there was two down on his bleeding record. I was just so (laughs) cross. And I, I thought, that's it. I can't win. I can't win with two down. What a stupid, stupid thing to do. So I gave the horse to my mum. I said, I need a minute. <laughs> and I just rocked up in a giant strut. And uh, I, I went and hid underneath it. I found a trailer and I literally went and hid underneath it and had a little strut. But I think the thing is that you are right. It's because you care so much. And actually, our yeah. Arctic Soul, his perhaps doesn't get the credit that he deserves because he is a very no. careful jumper, but yeah, he gets he really is. nervous, doesn't he? And he gets tight. Yeah. So when something happens and he has a mistake, 
yeah he, he'd like you say he panics and you think actually he doesn't deserve he doesn't deserve no. it and that he would actually be the... hates having a fence down like he but yeah. when I'm at home he he doesn't really knock jumps down he just doesn't he just doesn't because he actually hates being kept careless um and that's what what makes him such an amazing cross-country horse because he's actually so careful with his feet um and yeah, it's just when he gets a bit worried or tense, he forgets himself and then he, he, he frightens himself and then he quite often have the next one down. Yeah, and we can um, actually say, we know it has a happy ending, this story, because yeah, right. the frustration, I don't right. think, yeah. if you hadn't gone on to win, I don't think the clip would have been re- replayed no, quite no. as much. Exactly, I wouldn't be no. so harsh to Gemma. <laughs> exactly. the, the, this is the uh, point, Nicole, if I can just jump in there, that's the, that's the point of, of what we try and do with Event Rider Masters as well. It's the storytelling. It's it's it, trying to convey exactly what Gemma means, You know, uh, as just said, is that it means so much yeah. to her. Yeah. You know, her and her team, work day in and day out to get those results and and as Gemma said she could see the opportunity there for her to win on this horse and when it's suddenly taken away from you you think that that's you you know you've messed it up or something's gone wrong and it it doesn't feel fair you know it does hurt as and you you are quite right to have that moment of oh just you know because Mm. it's just trying to show to the viewers this is not something we do just for fun on weekends. This is our life and soul and the horses yeah. are our life and soul. The com- competing and winning is what we're all about and trying and, you know, and getting the best out of the horses, not just, just winning, but just getting that best result. Um, and so it's the passion that we're always trying to convey in our, our storytelling as, as the event rider masters as well and, and trying to be fair to that. And certainly if, you know, there's a, a lot more clips of a lot more, passion um passionate emotional moments that we don't use because they don't have that happy ending that that yeah Emma certainly did in that respect um yeah so it, you know that's that's the, the key thing and and just going on with that if I, if I think about being an event writer i i have so many different examples of my own career of exactly what um Gemma just said and you you remember those those key moments so vividly like like Gemma said she knows exactly what happened in those two particular jumps and she probably jumps a few hundred jumps a day um and, uh, and when she's busy you like literally when you're at a competition mm. you, you would jump a few hundred so you know they're not the sort of things you remember all day every day but um so there must have been when you after you had your moment and you went back to the lorry and whatever else to then come back out and still fight for the win and still win there must have been a turning point in your attitude or what, what happened or who, who said something to you or was it just yourself or how did you then <clears throat> go from being oh my god i've this is just ruined because I've had mm. two rails. My opportunity has gone to then coming back out and retaking the opportunity and, and actually winning. I mean, yeah. what happened there? Yeah, I mean, I would say that's one of my good traits. I'm quite good at having a, a big strut um, and, you know, get, almost getting it out um, and then going the away. Name. Yeah, getting it out and then, you know, maybe having a cry or, or whatever needs to happen and then coming out and saying, right, I've got... I have got the best cross country horse in the world. And today I'm going to show everyone what we're made of. And that's what I wanted to do. Um, I felt so sure that I could go really fast and safely around that track. Um, I was so ready to give it a go. Um, And, you know, we went back to the lorry and, you know, had a chat with um you know my mom and charlotte and and stuff and they said just go out there and go for it you've got absolutely nothing to lose now um so that's what i did and i came out that start because i said okay spike no handbrake today mate you can go as fast as you like and he was like <laughs> yes <laughs> that's like his dream come true i have to it admit he a- is he spent his life with the handbrake on <laughs> i know and to be honest taking the handbrake off him he is fast there was yeah, a moment really um Gat Kim is unbelievably hilly and around halfway around the course we'd already had a, a time check on you I think you where you needed to be on the clock and there was I mean he's an ex racehorse anyway arctic soul but you literally all you did was just slightly let go of the reins just a tiny bit and he yeah. was gone up this yeah. hill yeah and the machine it's not, yeah it's not often I say you can you can slip into eighth gear mate well he did and I was like whoa ooh, you know I was ooh. like <laughs> I was like Woody in um in Toy Story. <laughs> I was like that. <laughs> Not that fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, now I've got to slow you. Um, yeah. it, but that win, because I actually, I think it was the first time that 
uh, somebody had won an event ride a master's yeah. legs with, leg with poles down in the show jumping. And in terms of the series as well, because actually yeah. you've been very close to challenging for the series yeah. title the year before at Blenheim. Very. So the, the pressure, I think you probably put yourself under, actually yeah. that kind of, I mean, the, the result that that gave you, not only the win there, but the series points as well was a huge point. Yeah, it was. And it was just, it was such a, an amazing thing to happen because I was sat on, you know, I was, I was 11th going into the cross country. Yeah. So I sat on that podium and watched all those people. Yes. Okay. Some of them had run outs and, and made mistakes, but they were all trying very hard and no one got anywhere near the time, like nowhere near. And I just remember you saying, Nicole, you know, this one's got 30 seconds in hand this one's got 35 seconds yeah. in hand this one's got 40 and I thought there is no way these people are going to get that many time falls and they get, they, they, kept had, they were like up. minutes over the time or whatever and it was just unbelievable and I never forget um well Beanie Beanie was one and Ludwig was the other came in and said to me I genuinely do not know how you went that fast that horse must be a total freak and you must have very big brave pants. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just one of those moments, I think, in my career that I genuinely will never forget because it was just, it was just really cool. Um, and it just also showed everyone how unbelievably awesome that horse is. And, yeah. you know, that kind of, that means a lot to us riders. Yeah, absolutely. And and to get an international win for him as well, because yeah. top level four and five star, he has had so many top fives and top tens so at, at five star level. He's yeah. been to the World Games. Uh, he's been to a European Championships, but actually yeah. that win and that British I national know. title as well, it, it means a lot. And it's something it really that does be in black yeah. and white. Yeah. So, yeah. So obviously um, definitely couldn't choose between either of those two very special wins. Um, and then my sort of, third um special win was at linear last year um with jalapeno um she was a new ride to me last year and um you know she'd been beautifully produced by karen donkers um and you know we we started off our sort of partnership together quite really well at the beginning of the year with a placing at chatsworth um in the normal four-star section um and then we had a great great time at Bramham and then we just hit a couple of bumps um in our road and we just had a couple of misunderstandings cross country honestly more that that I was sort of putting the pressure on the horse and she wasn't quite following me um so we'd actually gone and we've worked really hard um at cross country schooling and I'd done loads of practicing and we'd been out show jumping because that wasn't her strong point and all those things and um, had some dressage lessons. We just worked really hard on our partnership and we came out at Linear and totally nailed it. Um, and it just was such a great feeling. Like, yes, all this work that I've done has come and paid off. Plus, I stood on top of the podium and Mickey Young was below me, which was just too cool. I'm not going to lie, that was cool. <laughs> You've got to savor those moments. He doesn't get you knocked have. off the top spot of the podium he very often. Not. Um, exactly. But I don't on, think on... I know of a single rider that <laughs> has, if that doesn't say that if they've ever beaten exactly. Michael Young, that is something that sticks in their mind. You know, even Chris Burton, who's won God knows how many, he every time yeah. he wins, he, he beats Mickey. He's like, check me out, I beat Mickey Young. And Tim Price is the same. They're all yeah, is it every rider's the like, yeah. there'll be t-shirts the made machine. next. Yeah. There'll be like I beat Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think yeah, I've got one so of those t-shirts. Get it out, Jim. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, so that was really special. And also, not only that, but it was for owners Chris and Lisa, who Stone, who obviously have a massive, massive involvement in the Event Rider Masters. And you know, they had sort of followed my, my, you know, very closely followed my work and progress with the horse. And we knew that she did have a big win in her, but we weren't expecting it at all. So you know, it was just really cool and really special and actually just in terms of, of you said that one of the sort of phases you had particularly worked on she's always been capable of doing a very smart dressage test I think she scored a 21 or a 22 like yeah. it was a very smart test but the show jumping yeah. in linear nobody yeah. jumped clear they, there were faults across the board I think there were only two rounds inside the time so you jumped clear but you had a couple yeah. of time penalties which mm. actually was a massively impressive result over that round so that yeah. kind of ticked that box as well and then she was clear inside the time <clears throat> 
exactly and the show jumping has not been easy for this horse um obviously um show jumping is something that i do a lot of um i enjoy it a lot i think it's something that i'm it's probably my strongest phase so we have worked really hard with her at home played around with bits just trying to get her really happy in her um in her mouth and in her carriage and all those sorts of things um teaching her a little bit more uh sort of adjustability we've done loads of um exercises with her at home to try and create that sort of elasticity and adjustability within her um because that's what i felt was slightly missing and i honestly god i was chuffed to have jumped to clear around um i'll never forget the the turn back there was a turn back to a triple bar and then on a very clever distance bending um you could have gone seven or eight it walked exactly seven and a half strides with a slight downhill approach to a double of um planks yeah and the planks were maximum height and the planks were this thin and I just when I walked across I said to Gary my boyfriend I said that's got Jala's name all over it <laughs> I just thought i would never get her to jump that but I I actually had a very clear plan in my brain in my head of how I exactly I wanted to meet those double of planks um and I absolutely 100% was going to go the eight strides from the um from the triple bar and uh, land quiet and just get there on a real quiet distance with a bit of space and that's exactly what I did and if she jumped through it I said right I said to myself there and then jump she's that. Jump. yeah she's gonna jump clear now I yeah. just knew it it's so yeah it's it's been amazing actually because there have been as you say so many highlights and it's nice to look back on them isn't it and kind of yeah. reminisce about them and if you want to go back and watch maybe that arctic soul Cross country round, go back and watch it. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Go to eventridermasters.tv. Cool. Um, Paul, just in terms <clears throat> of ERM and, and sort of what it is and, and what it takes to create the big broadcast, because I think it's something that's quite interesting. And we see a lot of, um, you know, well, what we see on TV, there's a lot that goes on behind us. Just tell us a bit about that because it's a massive operation. Yeah, on event site, um, we swell to a team of about 50 people. Um, and so managing those people um, to produce the show uh, from, from every perspective, be it the, the live scoring, the spectator judging, the social media, the, the TV broadcast, um, you know, all of those things, all of the branding on site, um, you know, all of the, you know, corralling yourself, Nicole, I'm all a the talent team. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, all of these people come together to, to make this amazing show. Um, and certainly behind the scenes, um, we don't want anybody to, to know how much work is going on behind the scenes. It just needs Meant to, to look, look slick. Yes. Yeah, it wants to look slick and, and professional and seamless and, and um, dynamic as well. So, it, you know, we're trying to make it not just a, a, a random um, digital live stream from a, a random green field or muddy field, wherever we might be. But it's a professional sporting broadcast, um, and we're we're doing it to um, any other professional um, TV broadcast standards. So, although we only put everything online, um, it's it's literally only a, 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 a an agreement with a TV broadcaster to put it on a TV channel, and it would be acceptable in terms of the quality and the standards that that we work to. So, so that all takes um, a massive amount of planning and a massive amount of effort um, to, to make that happen um, but it's it's great fun and you know I'd have to say that um, this week we were supposed to be at Chatsworth and and I would have been there on um, Monday morning arrive early hours Monday morning and I'd be there through till the, the following Monday morning so you know now as an event organizer we're, we're on site a lot longer than the competitors are the competitors come in and they have you know very long hard days as well obviously when they're at these competitions i know that firsthand but but actually um they will turn up on perhaps friday night and leave sunday afternoon and and when they're packing up and leaving and waving goodbye to me i've probably still got another four or five hours of work to do on sunday night so um you know it's it's a it's a very big, a lot of infrastructure to, to put in. We have a semi-trailer or an Arctic trailer, depending on which part of the world you come from, um, that, that turns up on Monday that I have to greet and, and unload and, and that all of our equipment. And then we have another three um, smaller, they're not very small, but another three vans that turn up um, with equipment. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's a, a, a good four days to set everything up prior to, 
any sort of uh, action taking place that the, the public or the riders are aware of. And it, honestly, it, the, I have to admit, what I'm feeling that I'm missing missing it massively because it's a huge part of my year and it's a huge part of my life. But in terms of, of what's in store, because obviously 2020, like so many other big events, I mean, the whole sporting calendar has come to a standstill and, and we're no exception. In terms of, of looking forward to next season, what are the plans? That everything's still wheels in motion 2021. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, you know, plan A is everything's back to normal next year. Um, okay. But I think everybody's plan A is that. Um, and hopefully that is the case. Um, you know, at this point in time, we're seven weeks into the UK lockdown, or in our eighth week, I think. Um, and actually, we're starting to ease now. But the time frames, nobody really has any idea. We don't really have any idea what it's going to look like at the end of this year, let alone next year. So, um, and we keep getting told there will be a new normal, you know, mm. but mm. we just don't know. So hopefully um, Event Rider Masters, re uh, hopefully the sport of eventing returns to normal and hopefully the, the Event Rider Masters is then able to, to return as normal next year as well. But um, that's all plan A and, and that's what we're planning towards. Um, but uh, as, as everybody knows in this situation, it's a little bit difficult to, to make any concrete plans at the moment. So, um, and like yourself, Nicole, um, you know that work we said earlier this whole point of the of what we're doing with the riders connected um campaign and the riders connected website is um try not to let people feel isolated whilst they are actually physically isolating um and certainly this week uh you know it's it's brought home to me the fact that um i'm a little bit over this and i really would have preferred to have been at chatsworth all week meeting up with all of the wonderful crew um not only the wonderful crew that i work with as event rider masters but the host venue organizers, the host venue volunteers, the the Chatsworth house staff. You know, we go into the house and do some filming in there. We meet some of the staff and 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 um, people there, and then the riders turn up and, and all of them. You know, we're we're all mates with them, and I miss having a having a, a an, eve, an afternoon beer with them and and um, <coughs> you know, mulling over those conversations that we've just had with Gemma about oh so and so fell off here and so and so mm. had a rail here and. Um, but what's all right, we'll be great tomorrow and, and, and having those conversations as well. So um, uh, missing that, but, um, uh, you know, like we say, hopefully next year we'll, we'll be all back to normal. Yeah, we hope so. And it is very much, I think, one of the things that I think a lot of people find hard is there is no time scale. You can't sort of go, well, do you know what eventing's gone for three months? We're going to be back on the 1st of August or whatever it is. Gemma, how are you coping with that? Because obviously you've got a business to run, you've got horses in work. What's it like at Team Tattersall at the moment? Yeah, it's really, um, you know, it is strange times. Um, we have put um, a few of the young horses out um, in the field. Some of the five-year-olds have been in all winter and we thought, well, they've been out show jumping and they've done a bit so they can have a break. Um, the older horses and a few of the sort of midly horses, sort of the six, seven-year-olds, um, are doing um, three to four days a week of um sort of lightish work you know like exercises um schooling bit of hacking things like that um I haven't furloughed any of my staff um we've just cut down hours because you know I felt that was the fairest thing to do um and we're doing lots and lots of jobs um which is not always <laughs> fun a bit boring um painting poles making jumps you know Gary's been making jumps um you know, yeah, doing the barns, which is what we're doing right now, which is a pretty tedious, we're not going to lie. Um, but the end result will be fab. So that's what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, it's it's strange times. And it's it's very odd not having a, a real um, goal um, every day. You know, you were normally competing at this time of year, three, four days a week, and sometimes even more. Um, you know, and the days spent at home between that are geared towards getting those horses ready for the next competition. Um, basically, we spend our whole time chasing our tail every day, um, not having enough hours in the day. Um, and, you know, that is just not the case at the moment. And it's just it is a little bit weird. and It's certainly taking some getting used to. But, you know, we're all in the same boat. And I've, I'm so lucky. We are so lucky that we have. Um, the horses to look after we have a team here we're all isolating together 
um, you know, we have, um, you know, we do have human interaction. Um, so we're very lucky because yeah. a lot of people yeah. just don't have that. Um, so no. we do think ourselves lucky. You know, I think we're, we're a real close team. Um, you know, I'm very lucky. I've got fantastic girls. And we, you know, each one of us have had a bad day here and there and we've just supported each other, um, you know, and it's, it's just how it is, isn't it? And we have to just um, cope and, you know, come out stronger. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it is important to kind of, when things are tough, to kind of go, do you know what, it is It is a hard day today, but tomorrow yeah. things might feel a bit better. Um, yeah. Can I ask, because obviously we had the news, I think it was yesterday, that Bukalo in the, in the Netherlands, which is towards the end of the year in October, that has been cancelled as well. International events are falling by the wayside. Have you got a bit of a plan in terms of, do you think you might do a little bit more show jumping? Because I know that's why we said a little bit earlier on, something that you've done a lot of in the past and that you, you yeah. really enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Look, I've got a few really, really lovely jumpers. Uh, our pure show jumpers, they are not event horses. Um, also, quite a few of my event horses are very nice jumpers. So it's quite fun um, show jumping some of those. So yes, absolutely. If there is no eventing, I will concentrate on doing some jumping. I'm pretty sure um, the jumping will be slightly um, more easy for organizers to put on. Um, you know, there are less people involved, um, so it might be slightly easier. Um, I know there is talk of, um, you know, the sunshine tours, autumn tours happening um whether that happens or not I don't know but it was uh, it's certainly something that I would look to do it to do um in the autumn you know go on a bit of a a tour take the jumpers and take some of the event horses as well as some of the young ones yeah and then there'll be positives in that in the coming next year Gemma. your show jumping <laughs> will be on point <laughs> even better than it already is um yeah. Paul, Gemma, thank you so much. We have loved hearing a little bit more about ERM on this show. Uh, Paul, just a reminder, if people want to get involved, download the Eventing Manager app. They can watch all of the simulated competition live this weekend. 7.30 UK time, Saturday night for the dressage and 7.30 UK time on Sunday night uh, for the show jumping and cross country combined. But download the Eventing Manager app, pick your team, buy your team with 10 million dollars and uh and see how we get on with that it should be good fun it should be a lot of fun it's literally like my dream game i love it <laughs> um, I'm, I'm living the dream here but it is a lot of fun enjoy it and get involved eventing manager and go and visit the riders connected website I'm as gonna well go and tell pebbles that she's got to be very well behaved this weekend go and get bathing there there you go. Go, and, go and bath her make her look beautiful um and good luck anybody that has Gemma on their team will be rooting you on so thank you both very much if you are just joining us here on eptv then make sure you subscribe you can tick the little alarm bell which will notify you every time we go live and if you've missed any of our past shows then go back and take a look because there is absolutely all sorts on there alice fox pit talking to piggy french and pippa funnel is one of my personal highlights we've had sam watson alex bragg harry mead lucy jackson the list goes on so go back and take a look but thank you guys very much for watching thank you to Gemma and paul for joining us and we'll be back very soon here on EPTV.